Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial we have a special guest tire, Mr. Dave Allison. And he's sharing not just any old pattern with us, he's sharing a Bob Quigley pattern, the film critic. Stay tuned. So we are gonna go just a little bit out of order because hey, we have a guest tire, this one, and I wanna share with all of you how Dave and I met. Well, the first official fly fishing or fly tying show of the year is always the Denver Fly Fishing Show. This one took place in early 2020 and I was really excited to get out there. Now, I didn't know who my benchmate was going to be, but it was none other than Mr. Dave Allison. I knew a little bit about Dave, but trust me, by the end of the show, I was impressed. He obviously could tie a really great fly. I mean, basically anyone who's on tires row, they have the chops to tie. But Dave was just so great in his communication with others. He was able to just share these techniques, build connections with all the people walking by, and just go step by step to tie some really exceptional patterns, plus their flies that catch fish. So at the end, I said to Dave that I would love to have him featured on Trout and Feather. He said yes, though I knew traveling to Pennsylvania for him from out west probably wasn't going to be possible. I had these grand illusions of traveling out west to record them, but 2020 didn't allow that. So we were able to do this one remotely. Now, the final piece of this is that whenever we went back and forth about the flies, he mentioned he was going to tie a Bob Quigley pattern. And Bob Quigley flies are not exactly known to be the easiest. So whenever he said, hey, what do you think about the film critic? I jumped at it and said, yes, let's see how this one goes. What I loved about Dave choosing a pattern that's not necessarily at that beginner level, we're talking intermediate to even some borderline advanced techniques, is that it's not just about showcasing the fly, but it's showcasing the pattern. And I hope that you've kind of gotten that feel from all of the stuff that I've shown you over the years on my YouTube channel, because there are so many flies that we just look at it as, it's this fly, and we have this fly, and we have this fly, but whenever we look at them all together, there are so many techniques, and so many components, and materials, and tools that we can just learn throughout this entire process, and I believe the Film Critic is another exceptional one for that. Whenever you see Dave demonstrate and share some of these techniques, you're gonna just obviously understand that he's a very talented tire, but more importantly, Take a look at some of these techniques that he shares and see how you can incorporate them into your flies. One of my favorite ones is the hackle stacker. That's something I featured in my YouTube channel videos a number of times over the years and it's not an easy technique by any means. Dave makes it look really, really, really simple. It's not. Practice it if you haven't tied it recently because it's a great one to incorporate into your emerger patterns. I have it incorporated into a number of mine. Dave, you're telling everybody about some of my favorite techniques for my guide flies, but that's the way it goes and that's exactly what I wanted for this channel. So Dave, you chose a great one for all of us and now all of you get ready for Dave to tie, but stick around afterwards because we're also gonna talk about fishing this pattern. Hey Tim. Today I'm going to tie for you guys a, uh, it's a Bob Quigley pattern. It's one of his uh, least known emerger patterns. This one's called a film critic. Everybody's familiar with the Quigley Cripple. And um, this fly uh, incorporates some of the Quigley Cripple style and it also incorporates uh, his hackle stacker. So it's a great little emerger pattern. You can see it's got a shuck tail and, um, and an adult mayfly tail. And then it's got a little wing bud, and then it's got a post on the front that makes it really easy to see. Sits down in the film nice, and it's, uh, it's a really good fly to fish. So let me get started. Um, I'm going to tie this fly on a hook that's not been released yet, but it's by a company called Moonlit Fly Fishing out of Idaho Falls, Idaho. And it's an MLO 61 and a size 14. Um, normally I would tie this fly probably in a size 16, but I don't have any of those hooks in a size 16. So um, I'm going to use some uh, Semperfly wax thread and Olive Dunn and ADOT. So let's get started. I'm going to throw my thread right behind the eye. And I want to do a nice smooth body all the way down. 
And since this isn't a merger, I'm going to go right around the bend of the hook and come down a few wraps. That looks good. And I'll bring my thread back to about the halfway point, right about where the point of the hook is. And come in and remove my thread. And like I said, I'm flattening it out a little bit. This this has a um, a shuck body and a um, and an adult tail. So I'm going to take just some brown uh, Z line, cut off a piece, and this is a little bit thicker than I need for this fly. So I'm going to just take and spread it apart. Take about half. That should work pretty well. I like to tie my, uh, when I do shuck tails on anything, instead of tying them in at the back, I like to tie them in up here because then I can keep my fibers a little bit more controlled. Let's go ahead and trap the front. And then I can lift my Z line at about a 45 degree angle to the hook and keep it right up on top of the shank. So if I tie it in at the back and try to wrap the uh, butt ends forward, it just goes all over the place on me. Okay, so I'm going to cut this pretty short. So that's my little shuck tail. And then to put an adult tail on it, I'm going to use just some uh, Coke de Leon. And I'll go ahead and take uh, three fibers. Okay, and then I'm not going to measure these. I'm just going to hold them by the tips in my left hand. I'm going to put them at about a 45 degree angle. And then when I come over, one, two wraps. Now I'm right up on top. And now I can adjust them to the length that I want. So that looks pretty good. And, you know, these, these tail tips are going to be down in the... Um, down in the water, so take my butts off. Okay, so now for a body, I'm going to go ahead and flatten my thread out. One thing I love about this Semperfly wax is that it'll flatten out like UTC, and the ADOT is a little bit stronger than the Uni ADOT. It's like the best of both worlds. So I'm just going to take some. Um, I have some olive, brown olive um, goose biots. I need a fairly long one. So I'm going to tie this in with the notch facing backwards because I want the, the rib to pop up as I wrap. And I'm just going to come in right here and I'm going to grab just the tip. Tie this in. Bring my thread up. I'm going to go ahead and throw a half hitch. Get my thread out of the way over here on the thread post on my Norvice. And when I tie with biots or peacock quills, I like to always use just a little bit of uh, super glue. I'm just going to coat my thread wraps and give that something to hold my uh, quill or biot. I'll take my hackle pliers. I need to be really gentle on this first wrap with just that tip tied in. Watch out for my hook point. Bring my biot up. Okay, and then I can come in, tie this off. One wrap right on the leading edge. And I can use my thread right through the sides of my biot and pop it off. Ooh, what happened there? That's not good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use for my post, I'm going to use just some EP trigger. 
fibers. They're, um, they're treated so they float nice. And the way that I was taught this fly is not really how I tie it anymore. Um, so I'll explain. So the way I was taught was you just tied in one strand of, of post material and then just stood that post up and then you tied your, wrapped your hackle around that and then pulled it over. And um, it, it's kind of kind of difficult to hold your post up. And so I tie my hackle stackers with a loop of thread. And, you know, and I wrap my, my hackle around that loop of thread. So I thought, why not do the same thing with my EP fibers? So what I do is I just make a loop. So I use about half as much as I think because I'm going to double it up now. I'm going to put this right up on top, bring my thread over loose to keep it up there. I want to wrap it back to right where my body ends. There we go. And then I'm going to bring my thread forward, flatten my thread out a little. And I can keep it from wrapping around the hook shank by coming over loose and then pulling down tight. And I want to stop about an eye length back from the eye because I'm going to need to put something in there. Okay. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off like a, a just a, an emerging wing. So like an emerging mayfly. All right. Now I need to put my hackle in. And so for this fly, I'm going to use a piece of uh, golden badger. Let's see here. I've got a piece right here on my desk. So this is just a uh, golden badger. And I'm going to take quite a few of the fibers off at the base to expose some stem. And I want to tie this in with the shiny side up, right on top. So I'll put the stem just a little bit to my side and let the thread wrap carry it over. Right, It's right dead center. So I'm going to bring my thread back. And then I'm going to bring my loop back. And I'm going to trap that down right here, right in front of that wing bud. And then compress the rest of those EP fibers. Okay, so now my loop is tied in, my hackle's tied in. And then I can um, I can dub the um, thorax. So for this fly, I'm just gonna use, um, let's see, I'll use a little bit of brown olive dubbing. So the dubbing I'm going to use is, uh, this is uh, Semperfly's super fine dry fly dubbing and it comes in these little square tubes and you'd be amazed how much dubbing is in that tube. It's a lot more than the little, little boxes that you can buy. Okay, so I want to start my dubbing, my thorax, right behind my eye for two reasons. One is that it will ensure that I don't crowd my eye and I can build that reverse taper back towards my post but I need to end up with my thread behind my post parked on the far side of the hook. So you'll see here in just a second let me get my uh, my dubbing on. I might make it, I might need a little bit more. So I'm just taking and slide my dubbing noodle right up and I want to do that first wrap right there on the edge. I want to make sure I keep that little space behind my hook eye clean. I can come back and then I can lift my loop and bring my thread behind it and leave it hanging on the far side of the hook. Alright, so now I need to wrap my hackle. And I can tell that my hackle right now does not want to doesn't want to wrap the right direction. So what I can do to fix that, this is a nice little trick, is just take your scissors and bend your stem. I don't know if you can see what I did there, but I just 
I put my scissors in there and bend my stem around it. And now my hackle is going to wrap correctly. So I want to do nice level wraps. And watch out for your wing bud on that first couple. So you can see I'm just, just like I do on a hackle stacker. I'm holding my loop with my left index finger and then I'm just passing the hackle from hand to hand and I can do nice level smooth wraps up. Now I want to go to the point where my hackle is as high, goes up as high as it is to my eye so you can see I'm there. And then I'm going to bring my hackle back through coming back down. Just take your time try to make nice smooth wraps. You want a nice bushy hackle. <clears throat> okay, so when I get to this point, I need a little bit of weight to hang on to my hackle. So I'll just use some hackle pliers. And I can park it on the screw on my Norvice here. And now everything is tied off. So it won't come, well it's not tied off, but it won't come unwrapped. And that's what the weight is for. Okay, so now the importance of parking my thread behind my loop on the other side is I can lift it up and I can manipulate this loop as I come around the bottom just like you tie off a uh, parachute atoms and I can manipulate my post so that I don't tie down any hackle fibers so I can just Tilt it out of the way. So I've done not two full wraps. And so now I can come in and cut off the, um, the waste piece of my hackle. Okay, so now that's all tied off. So the next thing that I need to do here is I need to get my thread up to the eye of my hook. So if I just brought it up and under like that, when you look underneath, you can see that thread wrap coming through your thorax. And uh, the fish probably don't care, but I don't, I don't like it. So what I'll do is I'll bring my thread up on top. And now I'm wrapping in the wrong direction. So if I just throw a quick half hitch in here. Now I'm wrapping in the right direction. And that thread wrap now is on top of my hook, on top of my thorax. And that's all about to be covered up with um, hackle. All right, so I just moisten my fingers. And I stroke all these hackle fibers back and kind of up. So I can get them all going that direction. Okay, and now I'm going to lay this loop right next to my hook eye on my side and I'll bring my thread over nice and loose try to trap it right on top so that's two loose wraps and put my finger in the loop hold on to your bobbin and stack okay and now stroke everything back and I can take my thread and I can pull back with each wrap and really clean my eye up. And I want to build a nice little head in here because it's going to prop the sighting post up. You could actually even do a wrap of, ha of uh, dubbing right here if you wanted to. But I'm just going to use um, my thread. Okay, so once I get that done, I can whip finish. see with each wrap I'm kind of pushing it back so I'll make sure that I clean my eye up it's a pretty easy fly to crowd your eye on so okay now I can remove my thread so this is handy see it's got a built-in cider post now so you can see your fly when you're fishing it so I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to cut it just a little taller than my hackle. And I can look around, make sure my hackle is spraying up and off of my thorax the way I want it. Um, you don't see any of those thread wraps. 
And I, I think that this is one of the better engineered flies um, that I tie. I really enjoy tying it. I've done other videos of it before, but I'm happy to do one for you, Tim. So thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Was I right? Dave is an exceptional tire, and he did so many great things with this pattern. Now, obviously, I'm going to tell all of you, vary it. Vary the colors, manipulate some of the materials, see how it fits on your local waterways, and just basically have fun with this pattern because it's a great one, and those techniques are just solid ones that can be applied forward. I think what really impressed me the most was as Dave was finishing that fly, I just kept thinking, oh, geez. He is going to crowd the eye because that thread can build up really well. Geez, he got that Semperfly thread in there and it looked exceptional at the end. Dave, great job tying this one. Now, whenever I think about the fishing side of it, gosh, I love Emerger patterns. If you start going through all of my YouTube videos, you'll probably realize there's something about Emerger patterns that I have always been drawn to. When I used to guide on the Delaware River, that was basically like my number one guide style fly, something that was Emerger based. And by an emerger, I'm talking about the stage where that nymph eventually starts to emerge into an adult. And between the nymph and the adult stage or phase, they emerge. And it's a very vulnerable stage, and fish understand that too. Bob quickly understood that, which is why he created this pattern for all of us to just share and embrace and share with others in the future. Whenever I think about fishing this pattern, this is one that I love to fish on a dry fly line with a super long leader, whatever can turn it over. We're talking 12 to 15 feet, and I like to have this one drift drag free towards the fish. Now, there have been many instances where I like to be upstream from the fish, cast this, and let it drift into its view, but trust me, that's a really tricky one because as you set the hook, you're pulling the hook away from the fish, and it doesn't always work out so well, but you get some beautiful drifts that way. So ideally, I want to be straight across in the water from the fish or maybe slightly downstream to guarantee a better hook set. Now, the one thing I want to mention about emergers. Think about emergers at any point when we have a prolific mayfly or caddisfly hatch because there's going to be a lot of adults out there, but at times those adults are still just attached to their trailing shuck. And what's great about this pattern, Dave has one built into it. So he has that Z-line trailing shuck with the actual adult, we'll say the natural tails, kind of splaying out as well. Do you need those natural tails? Probably not, but I think Dave and I kind of both agree they look really good on this fly. And sometimes the aesthetics part of fly tying overruns that guide style mentality. So if you choose to leave the Coke de Leon off, you'll be okay as well. But that trailing shuck is a key because it's something we can't always see if we have this emerger, it's kind of pushing its nymphal skin away, it's still attached, and that shuck's there, we can't see it. The fish can, and they know that that trailing shuck attached to that fly means vulnerability. That fly can't get away. That means they can get that fly. So just think about ways that you can incorporate a trailing shuck into more of your patterns that basically exist and ride higher in the water column. As we wrap things up, I want to give a huge thank you to Mr. Dave Allison for sharing this fly with all of us today. Dave, you are just an exceptional tire, an exceptional fly fisher, and I hope to get out your way out west to do a little bit of fishing and tying sometime in the future. But if nothing else, I will see you at the 2021 Denver Fly Fishing Show. For all of you who are interested in connecting with Dave, you can do so via Instagram. He is at West Texas Bugs, and you can also email him. I'll put both his Instagram username and his email address down below in the description of this video. To watch more videos like this, head over to troutandfeather.com. Once you're there, scroll down to the bottom and also don't forget to sign up for my email list. Every month or so, I send out an email with video updates, fly fishing and fly tying tips, tricks, all kinds of pictures, and I'm even going to be featuring a special guest blogger. There is lots in those email updates. Please join up. You are going to love them. Also at Trout and Feather, you can find more videos like this one. We're talking guest tires. Hey, I even have a page that's dedicated to some of my favorite dry flies, Emergers. I'll put a link in the description of this one. And finally, thank you to all of you for all the YouTube support. Um, I've just hit around 21,000 subscribers. I'm over 3 million video views and counting, and it's because of all of you. So thank you for liking this video. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for turning your notifications on. Thanks for kind of showing up when I have video premieres. Thank you for sharing all of these on Facebook, on Instagram. Thanks for tagging me. Whatever you're doing out there, thank you so much. It truly means the world to me, and it's because of all of you. So thank you for watching this video. Thanks for that support, and I hope to see all of you soon.